Um, in fact, this weekend, we are recognizing uh, Endangered Species Day. It's a time for us to reflect on both the success of recovering some of these cool animals, like the bald eagle and uh, the gray wolf and other animals, but also helps remind us that we still have a lot of work to do to make sure the animals that live here and belong here have a place to survive into the future. Uh, but one of the ways we use uh, science in the field are with these little guys right here. Do you want to know what this is? It's a, it's a remote camera trap. Now, we don't use the word trap in a bad way. Like, we're not going to go out there and catch an animal or cause any harm. These are um, really unique in that they basically just take pictures anytime something moves in front of them. Why would it be important to be able to take pictures of wildlife? Are some wildlife easy to see? No. How many of you have actually seen a bear in the woods? That's probably one of the easiest ones to find. <laughs> what about a bobcat? A few folks? Cool. What about a river otter? What about a least weasel? What about a striped skunk? Yes, yeah, some of these critters are really hard to find. And these camera traps not only help us to find these animals, but also to learn about them. And we're using them to, to learn about their needs so we can help make sure that they're safe in their environment. And let's talk about some of the cool projects we're doing with these camera traps. Uh, we have a project with camera trapping going on right here in our big backyard. Raise your hand if you're from the Asheville area. Cool. And raise your hand if you're visiting from somewhere else. I would bet you came here because Asheville is a pretty cool place, right? Now what makes the Asheville area, in my opinion, and and a lot of people that move here love, and love this place, is we have so many cool wild places all around us, whether it's the Pisgah National Forest, the Great Smoky Mountains, even the French Broad River right here going through town. Uh, incredible uh, places, incredible habitats for wild animals. Now, I mentioned the Smokies and the Pisgah are two big important chunks of public land, National Forest and National Park, but guess what is running right down the middle? I'll give you a hint, it's got four to four to six lanes, depending on what part of it you're on. It's called an interstate, Interstate 40. How many of y'all have driven Interstate 40 from Asheville up through to Knoxville? Anybody? Yeah, well you probably know, particularly if you're coming down at night uh, with low temps and a drizzling rain, it's kind of a panicky drive uh, because you're going and winding through what's called the Pigeon River Gorge. And that is the one area that separates the Smoky Mountain National Park and Pisgah National Forest, two really important habitats. Now, animals move, right? So when they're moving between these really important habitats and they have to cross the road, you think that's always a good thing for an animal? No, you think it's always a good thing for us? No, it can be really challenging. In fact, they reintroduced elk into the Smokies a decade or so ago, and their population is doing well enough, they're starting to move out of the park, and actually cross the interstate. And so we're part of a project now to figure out what is crossing the road, uh, what is coming into this area, so we have a better idea of how to help these animals get across, to put in uh, wildlife overpasses or underpasses, but basically providing connectivity, connection between these two wild places. And so the first part of that study is to look and say, hey, what's there? What's moving through this area? And that's what we've done here. And we've got some cool critters. Here's one. Anybody know what this is? Black bear, that's right. Now apparently it did not like the sound of the click of that camera because it is running away as fast as it can with its ears back and its feet up. You just see, sometimes you just catch the tail end of some of these critters. What about that? Who knows what this is? Bobcat. Very good. That is a bobcat. And how many of you guys have cats or dogs at home? What are they usually doing when they're squatting down like that? Going to the bathroom. It's science, guys. It's biology. It happens. Everybody does it. But wild animals, mammals like bobcats, do it for a very important reason. They use uh, their waste to help leave scent marks. And scent marking is really important for mammals. It's the way they communicate with one another. Especially like saying, hey, this is a part of me. I live here. This is my territory. Uh, and it helps them to communicate with one another, to establish territories, to help find partners and mates. So it's a really important thing that animals do. So not only can we learn about
about these animals by observing them, we also learn about their behaviors. Everybody knows this one, pretty classic animal. Yeah, white-tailed deer. Is it a male or a female? Male, how do you know? Absolutely. This is a buck, pretty good-sized buck. I count six points on that one. So we know we have deer moving through this area with bobcat. Again, back to a black bear, getting a little bit better profile picture. Now, who can see the animal in this photograph? You see it? Did it take you a second to find it? Well, that's good. You guys have really keen eyes. But what's cool about this is look how camouflaged this bobcat is. It's actually well blended into its environment in the forest landscape. And so when you have these cameras out, you'll get multiple pictures of the same animal kind of making a lap, taking a circle, moving back and forth. Because animals are out there looking for things to eat, but also patrolling their territory. Here's a really beautiful photograph of a bobcat in the snow. Very striking. Who knows what animal this is? Fox. Fox, okay. What's some other guesses? Coyote, ding, 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 we have a winner. Yeah, now we do have fox here, and actually at one point in time we had red wolves here. Uh, red wolves are now one of the most endangered animals on the whole planet, but they're still found in North Carolina, and one of our projects is on red wolves, and I'll show you those to you in a minute. But with the loss of red wolves from its na native habitat, coyotes, who are really well adapted to take advantage of open space, and particularly where people live, have moved into our area. They've really filled in what we call a niche. They filled in a niche as an important predator on the landscape. Not everybody likes coyotes. In fact, unfortunately, in history in the US, we pretty well persecuted this animal uh, more than any other critter. But it's an amazing adaptive canine that really bounces back pretty easily and has found a home in the mountains. There's a baby black bear. How cute is that? That's the crowd pleaser. <laughs> that little small one there. See, you can also get an idea of how, you know, your population. You've got, obviously, a mother bear here with a cub, so you can see you know, how many cubs they're having each year, study them over time. Oftentimes, black bear get a little too curious for their own good. In fact, that's why, with these cameras, we have to lock them up in these heavy steel boxes so that bears can't gnaw through them. Uh, bear and a lot of other animals have scent glands on their face, on their heads, on their necks, on their paws, all over the place. And so they'll actually chew and use their mouth to leave scent. And that's what they're sometimes doing with these cameras. They're saying, hey, this is a weird thing in here. I want to make sure I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> and we also are able to get video. Now, this is a video from a very important place. We're going from the mountains now down all the way to the coast of North Carolina to a national wildlife refuge important habitat established just to protect wild things uh, called Alligator River National Wildlife Refuge. And this is part of our camera trapping effort in the Red Wolf Recovery Area. And that is an area uh, that is the only place in the entire world where red wolves still live in the wild, right here in North Carolina, which I think is so cool. And we're working to keep those animals protected. And one of the, way we're, one of the ways we're doing that is to not only demonstrate that red wolves are here, but also, as a lot of people really believe predators um, decimate game populations, we're basically saying, no, that's a myth. Look at all the amazing wildlife that lives alongside these important predators. One of which is a big, big old black bear. And we've got a pretty cool image here. This is sort of the black bear going out for business during the day. Just loping around. Hear his teeth on the camera. <laughs> Hear his sniff and walk away. They gave up on it. Who knows what that cool animal is? Turkey. Turkey. <laughs> yep. Yes. When I was driving to school, mm -hmm. I saw a turkey cross the road like yeah. a human. Was properly walking on the sidewalk. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, uh, turkeys are pretty well adapted to our urban environments as well. One of the cool things that turkeys do is they're, uh, especially when they're, uh, when it's breeding season, mating season, uh, the males get very territorial. And one of the interesting behaviors you might see is a big male 
puffed up and it, and it reflects of itself in the side of a car. And it'll actually attack a car uh, to scare up another other competing male. There's our red wolf, guys. Pretty cool, huh? Long legs, not as bushy of a tail as a coyote. It's about twice the size of a coyote, actually. Anybody see that little reflective thing on its neck as it walks by? Yeah, that's a reflective collar that's used so you can see them at night. Uh, also, it helps um, Fish and Wildlife Service biologists track them and keep tabs on them. Are they up here in the mountains? They are not. They were in the 90s. They were reintroduced to the Smokies in like the late 90s. But unfortunately, that release uh, was not successful. Uh, the big reason it wasn't successful is because the Smokies is such rugged terrain that the biologists couldn't get out to them to vaccinate them before the pups succumb to uh, domestic dog diseases like parvo and things like that. So um, the good news is you know, this, this environment is a little more accessible uh, and uh, for that reason they're able to actually give them the veterinary care they need to make sure the pups survive uh, those really critical points in time. And now here's that black bear coming back from his long day. <laughs> now another really important project, now we're going to go even further south, <clears throat> all the way down to Florida. And because it's endangered species today, this is one of our more iconic endangered species, this is an animal we almost lost, it almost went extinct. But as of this year, it is now rebounded. We probably have at least 200, if not 220, um, panthers surviving in southern Florida. And one of the things these panthers need to be able to do to continue to grow their population is move and expand their range. And one of the things that's been limiting their range for a long time is this area, it's actually, a, it's not even a river, it's an old, it's a canal called the Caloosahatchee River, uh, but it's very hard for animals to cross. And males, as many uh, of, the, of that gender, that speed of these species, tend to be a little bit more risky tend to spread a little further to establish new territories. Females, on the other hand, because they've got the most important job in nature, which is to have young, uh, are a little more wary. So that river was a big boundary for them for a long time. We were able to protect enough habitat on both sides that for the first time in 30 years, female panthers are north of the river. And what we can know from these camera traps is not only that they're in these locations, but also that they're breeding and having kittens. In fact, this animal right here, we know it's a female, and we know it has kittens, not because we can see the kitten, but because we can see her mammary glands are swollen. So we know that she's nursing, which is a really good thing we can learn from these camera traps. And I will tell you, uh, I have the, our lead person that does Florida panther work, has been doing that work for almost 20 years. Guess how many panthers she's seen in the wild? How many? One? 102. 102? Only one. That's why camera traps are so important. Because these are super, super elusive and secretive animals. 